Nora O'Donnell joins us now from San Bernardino. Nora, you're there on the ground. What is the feeling in the community there? Well, I think there's a feeling of, of shock here this morning, and there's still a lot of questions to be answered. The motive, why was this carried out? Um, more about the suspects, uh, Mr. Farouk uh, and his wife. Why would they do this attack in the middle of the day at a holiday banquet? We're joined now uh, by Timmy Hilliard. He actually works at the Inland Regional Center. Tell us what you saw. I was actually seeing the aftermath when everything occurred. I was in building two, which is next door to building three on the third floor. Uh, at the time of the incident, I was doing paperwork in my office with the door closed music, and then I heard trampling down the hallway up and down, and I got a text from a colleague stating that there was an active shooter on premises. At the time of being done, I actually thought that the maybe have been a person with a gun walking around or something happening just outside. I mean, you know, I had nothing big, nothing major. Uh, went out to the conference room to look to see what's going on. And there's actually people running, screaming, crying. At that time, I realized that it may have been something bigger. Um, and so at that time, my instincts kicked in to go see. I heard there was bodies down. So instinctually, I just. Where did you over. hear there were bodies down? Um, in the conference room, people were talking. They said they saw the shooting. They saw people on the ground um, on by building three. In fact, you had a bird's eye view of the entrance into the building, and you took video. Yes, I did. Actually. On your cell phone. Yes, I took video of it. Um, and like I said, instinctually, just took over and shot video of the bodies on the ground. There was one hunched over on a bench, looked like a male to be deceased. And then on a, a female laying to the right of him about 10, 15 feet away, laying in a pool of blood. Um, and you believe that they had been trying to exit the building and were shot as they were trying to escape? Correct, from what I believe, looks like the lady was trying to flee and then she just collapsed and passed away. Looked like the, the gentleman on the bench was probably sitting down and taking a break or smoking or something because there's a smoke area right there. So I believe he probably was shot as entry. Could you hear the gunshots? No, unfortunately I couldn't. I was in my office on the north side of the building um, and the shooting was on the south side. So all I had on was music and talking to my colleague in my office. We share offices. You saw the police. They arrived pretty quickly. They arrived very quickly, and a big fleet of everybody was coming in. SWAT, CHP, sheriff, you name it, was coming in. And then what happened next? The police went inside the building. They were storming the building. SWAT came in uh, from the, the east side of the building, uh, one behind another, took video of that to see what was going on. They went into auditorium A and B where the party was going on uh, from the county. And at that time, um, PD was coming up from the other side with the main entry. And a few minutes shortly later, I saw them dragging bodies out. In fact, Timmy, we're watching the very video that you shot with your, your iPhone. You saw emergency personnel bringing the bodies out of that door. Yes, there was, by counting, when I stopped, there was at least 13, including the two that were already outside. Um, some were moving very slowly. I don't know if they deceased or not as well. They just started bringing them out and chairs, just carrying the chairs out with them hunched over. Not on um, gurneys? No, there was just the police pulling out. There was no medical there at the time. It was police were clearing the area first to get everything sought out. And they're just by arms, by feet, one by one, just pulling bodies out. What did you think at that moment? It's bigger than I thought it was. Yeah. Um, it really didn't hit until we were being transported on the buses to an uh, undisclosed area. So at that time, seeing the police escort with five buses with my colleagues, it started hitting that it was pretty big. That this was a massive shooting. By not far. The, not the, it's the largest since Newtown, since Sandy Hook. Yes. Um, I want to ask you too because you can see from that video you shot you had an incredible vantage point. Did you see the suspects? No, they fled by then. It was about by the time I started taking video, it was about 15 to 20 minutes after the shooting occurred. Um, so I didn't see anything at that time. My colleagues were barricaded in two different conference rooms um, with chairs and tables, and me being me, I didn't want to be barricaded in a room. I wanted to see everything that was occurring. Um, so. so it's possible there was a thought that the shooters were still on the loose and could be coming after you and your colleagues in your building. By far. But my, my thought was they're on the first floor. There's a key entry. I'm on the third floor. So it'll take them a while 
to get up to me. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't thinking that they could shoot through the glass, the windows to get to me, but I was just thinking, take the video, make as much accurate accounts of the situation as I could. Well, Timmy, I'm glad that you're safe this morning. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. My best to you. Thank you. My best to you and all that you work with. And there you can hear Meg and Anne Marie. What an incredible firsthand account uh, as he witnessed the response from the San Bernardino police and sheriff's department and emergency officials as they responded to the shooting. Yeah, quite dramatic. And the video is quite dramatic as well.